So the uh, network scanning process um, is meant to discover hosts and services on a network. Hosts are machines, just to know like which machines are up, which machines are live, which machines are available. And services mainly are discovered by finding ports. So ports are logical numbers on that networked machine. The machines can be listening on these ports for different programs. So if you have multiple programs running on that machine that need to communicate with the internet or the network, uh, then in order to do that, they have to go through a certain port from that machine such that when the packets come back, they know which port to go to such that the operating system can give it to the correct software. A program that's called NMAP, which is short for Network Mapper, is the most popular software that's used to discover hosts on a network. It can discover live hosts, it can discover live open ports on live hosts, and it can suggest the running services that are listening on these ports. So these are three main elements. It also can make suggestions on what the operating system on this host is. So it does a lot of things that we talked about in the scanning phase for how attacks work or even the scanning phase for pen tests. Before we proceed, I have two, two quick slides on how our full networks represented in terms of numbers. So if we have an IP address that is 192.168.1.1 slash 24, what does this number mean? The 192.168.1.1 is an IP address for a machine. The slash 24 is something called a subnet mask. A subnet mask is what defines the boundaries of the network that this machine belongs to. How many other machines can be there and what is the range of IP addresses for this subnetwork such that the machine knows how many other machines are around it and how to send packets to them and things like that. So does anyone know what what a slash 24 means in terms of a subnet mask. So a subnet mask identifies how many bits of this address is dedicated to the network address that never changes. This is like the common part between all the machines and how many bits are the ones that change in order to allow for multiple hosts to be within this network. So slash 24 means that there are 24 bits in this 32-bit address. So this is why when we represent slash 24, we are represented as 255, 255, 255, and then zero. The zero is eight bits of zeros. All the 255s are like ones. So this means 24 ones and then eight zeros. So this means that the network ID is the first 24 ones and then dot zero at the end. So the network ID here is 192.168.1.0. And this network ID is just a number that tells you the name of the network. It doesn't belong to a machine. You cannot assign it to a machine. There's another thing that's called the broadcast address, which we talked about. The broadcast address is the last address in a network. If, you, if anybody sends a machine to this address, it is sent to all the machines in that network. That's why it's called broadcast, right? And the last IP address in this network is 192.168.1.255, which means that the IP range for any available machines within this network starts at 192.168.1.1 and ends before the broadcast address, which is 192.168.1.254. And typically, you would always want to know the number of hosts that can be available on this network. So in this case, it's going to be 254 because it's 256 minus 2. And these two are the network address and the broadcast address. So let's do the same for this. So this is 10.0.0.1. This is an IP address 
slash 16. We said that slash 16 means that there are 16 ones in the subnet mask. So the first eight bits are gonna be 255, second eight bits are gonna be 255, and then the third eight bits are gonna be zero, the fourth eight bits are gonna be zero. So the subnet mask is gonna look like that. 255, 255, 00. The network ID is the very first address in this whole network, which is 10.0.0.0. And the subnet mask is the last IP, which is 10.0. These are fixed because they are part of the network ID. And then the last address in the subnet mask is 255.255. And the IP range here starts from 10.0.0.1 to 10.0.255.254. And why is that? Because 255.255 is the broadcast address. So let's start by looking at now an nmap command that says nmap this network. So if you type up nmap 11.11.0.0/24, so you're actually trying to nmap a whole network. Nmap can work on a single host, so you can give it an IP address for one machine and it can scan only that machine, or you can give it a full network and it can scan all the hosts in that network. So this is why if you scan a slash 24, then you're looking for all the 254 machines in that network. So this command that you see here in map 11.11.0.0 slash 24, it's a simple command and it just uh, scans all the addresses in this network. And by default, it scans only 1000 TCP ports on the host. And these 1000 TCP ports are the most commonly used TCP ports when you just run a simple command with no arguments or no options like this one. One important point is that Nmap will take some time to perform the scanning before it starts showing you output. I mentioned that because I see a lot of questions that says, oh, I ran Nmap and it doesn't show anything. It actually will look like the screenshot that you see in front of you. It can stay like that for a few minutes before it starts showing you output like that. Once it starts showing you output, it will start telling you this is the report for this IP address. And then it tells you some information here about filtered ports, which we will get to in a moment. And then it gives you a list of the ports which it found open and it suggests what service is working on this port. This here doesn't have to be always true. It just gets it according to a list again that it has that says that port 443 is usually HTTPS. And then it shows you the report for the next live machine. So you can see that these are not sequential because there were no machines running between dot one and dot thirteen. There was nothing, no live machines in these IP addresses. So it shows you the next IP address that was live, as well as the, any open or closed ports on that machine. And it keeps doing that until it reaches the last of the two fifty six IP addresses, and it tells you how many hosts were up out of these 256 and how much time did it take to complete this whole scan. So let's talk about port status. There are six different port statuses, which are either the port is open or it's closed or it's filtered or it's unfiltered or open filtered or closed filtered. We will skip these three because they are the least common to appear. So we'll not discuss those. The most important three that we will talk about are the open, closed and filter statuses. So open means that this port on that machine is actively accepting TCP or UDP connections. So there's something that's listening on that port. So it's open. This is somewhere where you can start digging deep more into to know what service is running there and maybe it's a good entry point for that machine. This is the primary goal of port scanning and open ports show services available for use on the network. So that's easy. 
tells you that these ports are open. Closed means that there's no application listening on it. So it actually is accessible, so you can reach it. So if you send it something, it will tell you, oh, nothing is working here. Sorry, this is a closed port. So it's very important to know this because this is the difference between closed and filtered. It's accessible because it receives and responds to Nmap and they are helpful in showing that a host is up on an IP address. So one way this is useful is because if a machine has all ports closed, you can still know whether it's up or not according to the responses that you get from its ports. If the ports send back and say, I'm, I'm not accepting anything, then this means that this host is up, but all of its ports is closed. So it's good for host discovery to know that uh, hosts are up. Filtered means that Nmap was not able to determine whether the port is open or closed because there is something called packet filtering that prevents probes from either reaching the port or probes from getting back to Nmap. And this filtering could be from a dedicated firewall device. It's either a firewall on the network or a host-based firewall. Host-based firewall is a firewall that's on the host itself that just configures the machine not to respond to any of these kind of things. Since it doesn't respond, then Nmap doesn't know is that because the host is down or maybe the responses were filtered by a firewall or maybe the responses were dropped while they were coming back. So there are multiple reasons why it might not be receiving responses. When this is the case, when it's confusing to tell whether the ports were open or closed or what was going on, Nmap tells you these ports were filtered. We didn't receive a notice that they are open. We didn't receive a notice that they were closed. You need, if you, if you really care about these ports, you need to dig down deeper to see their status. Uh, they are frustrating for attackers because they provide so little information. And this forces Nmap to retry several times to try to discover if these ports are open or closed. So this will slow down the scan dramatically. So this is why Nmap may take long time scanning and may also generate a lot of traffic on a network that can be detected by intrusion detection systems to know that someone is doing a scan on a network or something like that. So again, uh, the simplest form of an Nmap command that we've looked at so far is just an Nmap and then a target specifications, which is the target name. But there are, are different scan types that you can use and there are different options that allows you to do multiple things in that scan.